Sir, you're charged with especially aggravated kidnapping. You're also charged with aggravated assault. And you're charged with theft of a firearm worth less than $2,500. You're talking about stuff that is not relevant. Hello and welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. I am the recovery addict and boy do I have a case for you today. Why is the dog Whoa. chewing on this guy? I think they have got the wrong guy they there. They got the wrong guy. The dog was, was biting him. He roughing him up quite a bit. There's a lawsuit. No, I'm not Peyton Anson John Milton. I am the agent authorized to represent Peyton Anson John Milton as written in all capital letters. Thank you. And as to Mr. Milton, is there a confidence of concern? Or is uh, I, the, uh, I'm, I'm I am not, not uh, represented by anybody besides myself. In my sovereign capacity, appreciate you. Thank you, Your Honor. I did have an opportunity to speak to him. I read him the reports. He was Who is him? Don't interrupt. I read him. I read him. You just get quietly. Thank you. I read, it, I read him the report so that he will understand the charges against him. Um, he didn't wish to hear anything more about his rights, and he does not wish to be represented. Because he's the guy. You guys, welcome back. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. I am the Recovery Addict. Thank you very much. Hope you had a great lunch. I uh, I went back and got some of the bacon that was was maliciously left off my salad. Uh, so I had the bacon on the side. Uh, but I did eat healthy before then. <laughs> so Sorry, a few minutes late coming back. I was uh, poking around some of the other courts, seeing what's going on, uh, get, making sure some recordings or things were happening the way we're supposed to. So... We're back. We're back. We are about to go back to court here in Arizona where we we expect, we have expectation that uh, that we are going to have um, cross-examination of Mrs. Kelly. So that's that's where we are. It's been a little bit spicy this morning. It's been a little bit painful at times, but uh, what did I have for lunch? I had salad. I had salad, and then I ate the salad in front of you, y'all, and then afterwards I went and had the bacon on its own. Probably more bacon than I should have had if it was just on my salad, but at least we're, we're counting the salad, okay? But that's a win. That's a win. Let's see. We do have a phone call coming in. Let's see who we have on the line here. Call from Braxton. Braxton, my friend. How are you doing? I am doing good. Braxton, How about can, you? can I put you on hold for one second? Go for it. Okay. I forgot to, to properly call out uh, Britta Aller, who was first in chat. On lunch. And, and Britta, oh. she's won before. She's done this before. Uh, so it's not a first offense. But congratulations, Britta. You are first in chat. And we're going to send it to you with internet ownership. Adding this to your permanent record. Um, you're you're becoming a repeat offender, I believe. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Britta, for being first in chat. We appreciate it. Somebody has to do it. And uh, first on the phone today is Braxton, though. What, what sort of punishment should we get for Braxton? You know, Braxton, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've always thought about whether or not I want to... Uh, be tech support for the internet and do my job at the same time. Which is literally tech support for the internet. <laughs> so, yes, yes, exactly. You're probably the most qualified person possible. Um, yeah. Fair. Um, all right, so I, I've i got some stuff. I've got thoughts. I've got questions. Mm-hmm. I have questions of my own, but I've also been taking down questions from chat. Okay. Um, so a couple of my thoughts. I think the jury may be empathizing with her significantly and I I could see them looking at her as like their grandmother or grandmother figure. Mm -hmm. And so seeing the anger and the painful sadness and the angry sadness Mm -hmm. is just turning them against prosecution. I agree. But, Honestly, I don't think the prosecution needs her testimony, right? There's, there's no. nothing. She, she doesn't know anything about what happened. She didn't see it. She didn't observe it. She heard some bangs and it happened outside. You know, and that, that's about it. They don't, I don't, they don't need it. And for them to be focusing so much against her, yet I think it's only hurting them. They're only attacking her. Yeah. Like, uh, I... I think it's a 4D chess move from the defense. Yeah, Lenova says, I think right. it actually hurt the state's case in this sense to bring Mrs. Kelly because I think it made the viewers look at Mrs. Kelly as the defendant. 
they almost put her up as like a co-conspirator. I mean, that was the that was the vibe I was getting. And they're like, you are just as guilty because you said four and then you said five or six. So, yeah, like they were trying to make her look not credible, but at the same time, they just made their own witnesses look absolutely terrible. Like, I. Uh, I didn't think I could see less credibility in some of those officers. <laughs> but here we are. Uh, yeah. It's interesting. I wonder, they're, they're, this trial is supposed to last a little over a week more. So they've got a couple more days of, of testimony, at least on the, the prosecution side. Um, I, don't know, I don't know what big, do they have like a, a home run, a cleanup batter? coming in you know in, in baseball you, you load the bases then you send up the heavy hitter to knock a home run and bring everybody in right do they have somebody coming up and if so who would it be you know um red 10 was talking about this in chat um and was wondering if they'd rest after this uh, well, but then brought up the fact that they have the, the text cell messages. phone the text messages need to come in so yep. maybe the son exactly but i don't think he's going to testify i, I no. don't know if he might so cell phone expert. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, I don't know. What else could they have? Yeah, I, I don't know. The text messages have to come in, Braxton. Uh, and that's that's got to be um, before they rest. That can't come in. They're, it's not going to come in through the defense, okay? Because it only makes them look bad, and they are pretty bad. Yeah. If you look at them, it's it's got some stuff. Hey, you basically it's like, hey, you want to go hunt illegals? Grab your gun, locked and loaded. It it's it looks oh. really bad. Okay, <laughs> it's but that in and of itself is not proof. So it might be enough circumstantial yeah. to get a, a juror to convict, but we'll see. Yeah, um, you know, I saw her. I the more I saw her on the stand, mm-hmm. the more. I realized that she is just really smart. <laughs> like, I feel like she may have been coached slightly, but as soon as she started seeing the traps, the prosecution was trying to lay for her. Oh, she could. She smell just it. wasn't having it. She could smell a trap. She just was not having it. Yeah. Uh, it helped. It helped when she would. I think when she would say, "Please restate the question," or "What are you asking?" I think she was formulating stuff in her head then. I think I think those questions were fairly, even though they were a little convoluted. Sometimes they were fairly easy to understand. Um, but she'd be like, "So repeat the question. What are you asking?" And and she would uh, when she was reviewing the the transcript, she was trying to put everything in context and try to couch everything the way that that sort of included the right answer as well as the one that the the, the state was looking for. Yeah, definitely something interesting. Like, as soon as they made her cry. <clears throat> and they did. Sorry. They made her as, cry. As soon as they made her cry, and there was no compassion afterwards whatsoever. I, I could not understand that. Yeah. It, it, it alienated me so much when she, the prosecutor didn't have any compassion for this older woman sweet older woman who they made cry it was bad we're we're coming back to court right now um one more quick question from the creative beat will it be a short cross i i, I don't know i'm trying to listen to the judge as well i th- i think i think yes it will okay uh cool that's a good one um, All right. We'll let you go, Braxton. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. I'm going to try to use this we'll speaker. Bye. And yeah. then if I Bye. go out there any reason and you can't hear me, let me know and I'll grab the same microphone, okay? Okay. Thank you. While we're talking about hearing, let's just get that cleared up real quick. Uh, Ms. Kelly, do you, Mrs. Kelly, do you mind if I call you Wanda? You may call me Wanda. Thank you. Um, we've had a chance to talk a few times, correct? Yes. And I got hired and came out to your home and viewed everything. Is that right? Correct. Okay. So you've had a chance to talk with me, tell me your story, things like that, right? Right. All right. Now, let's talk about the hearing since that was an issue throughout this hearing so far today. Um, In reference to back then, we heard testimony 
that at a certain time you thought one of your hearing aids might have ran out of battery, correct? Correct, it said low battery. Okay, and then later the other one, later into the evening, you thought that's when that one also went out, correct? Correct. Okay, and that's after you had a chance to realize and remember that you did have your hearing aids in, correct? Correct, well, one. Okay, what I wanna talk about though is after that incident, mm -hmm. okay, did you realize that your whole hearing aid had a defect at that time? Yes, I do. It did, was, go ahead. the charge when it was rec working, the charge would hold for 12 hours. And then the charge, when it says charged fully, it would only hold it for about six hours. But also, I did not have quality of hearing, so I got in touch with the hearing aid company and they sent me a new pair. About what month was that? I think I called, the, got in touch with them the end of March and they sent me the new ones in April. Okay. Does that account for some of the reasons why you were having a hard time hearing things that maybe your husband was hearing? Yes, because now with these new hearing aids, I can hear things outside before he does. I'll say, is that a car out there? Or is that a helicopter? Or, and he'll say, I don't know, what do you hear? No. So now my hearing is much better than his. Okay, and, but during the time preceding this case, there were a lot of things your husband was pointing out to you that you were not hearing, like your cat meowing or whatever. Correct. My, my kitten would, hear, would uh, meow, she'd be in the bedroom, and I would be in the living room, and, and uh, i just sit there, and Alan said, well, your cat's cr crying. I said, oh, and so i get out and go, see. What's going on? What was going on, yes. Okay, so, but at the time of this incident on January 30th, you didn't realize how bad you were hearing or not hearing, correct? That, that is correct. Okay, and everything you're saying is, is truthful, right? You did get this replaced. I did. Question, Your Honor, cause for the witness to vouch for herself. She asked her if she's truthful. It was in question earlier about, I just re the question. Everything that you're talking about in reference to your hearing right now is truthful, correct? Same objection, Your Honor. Is what? Hold on. Same objection. All right, objection is overruled, Chief. Go ahead. So you're you're explaining this truthfully to the jurors now. Correct. Okay. Yes. And so there was a little bit of testimony earlier about whether you talked about it or didn't talk about it. Sometimes is it true when you're not hearing, you don't know that you're not hearing. That's correct. If you can't hear it, you can't report that you're not hearing it, right? Right. Okay. But even though you got better hearing equipment in your ears now, are they in right now? Yes, ma'am. You still have some difficulty hearing, right? Right. I mean, you've had to ask numerous times to repeat something in order to hear it. Correct. And it helped when she had a speaker on closer to her mouth and you were able to hear better. Correct. Okay. And of course, if there's something I say that you can't <laughs> hear or don't understand, please let me know, okay? Okay. Um, so even though hearing aids are not the most perfect thing. Doesn't give you perfect hearing ability, does it? No. Okay, but it is a tool to assist in hearing better. It is helping me hear better because without them I don't hear much at all. Okay. And do you believe that could account for the reason why you didn't hear the first shot? I'm sure that's why I didn't because now I can hear thunder in the distance and, and say, Alan, there's thundering. He has like, oh, so, so that's why I did not hear that shot. Okay, and we'll get back up to that. I'm jumping a little ahead, but I wanted to direct that to the hearing portion of everything. Um, so let's go back a little bit and talk about a little bit more about what the state brought up was some of the history of the two of you. You met out of high school, is we correct? Met, we met in high school. All right. And Wanda, just for the court reporter, let's both, I'm, I'm very bad at it also. 
Wait, I know you're predicting what I'm going to say, and I do the same. So let's be very careful to pause so her job is easier, okay? All yes, right. and I apologize. Okay, and I will apologize in advance too, because I'm sure I'll do it. <laughs> um, so you met in high school, so you're high school sweethearts. Correct. And you've been married for a lot of years. How many did you say? 53 to be 54 in August. That's older than a lot of people that are in this room, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> this, I imagine, being married to someone that long, how long did you date? Four years. So f almost 54 plus four is like almost 58 years you've been with around this man. That's correct. Okay. And I would imagine that this whole thing is very stressful. It is. Okay. Um, you know what the charges are, right? Yes, I do. What is the charge? Second degree murder and uh, assault. I mean, aggravated, aggravated assault. Okay, and you know that's very serious. Yes, I do. And back on January 30th, when people were being arrested, you knew it was very serious then too, didn't you? Yes. And is it true that you wanted to cooperate, but on the other hand, this is your husband? That's correct. I mean, I imagine you must be torn. I didn't hear that. Thank you for asking. I would imagine you must be torn. Yes, I was. Between wanting to cooperate with the law, is that in your nature to want to do that? Yes. And protecting your own husband, correct? Correct. Now, you could have protected your husband and said that they came in with guns and lied about it. You could have, right? Yes. But you didn't do that, did you? No. Did you try to tell the truth to the best of your ability? Yes. But as being a little bit older, being more confused between your hearing and just what was going around you, the stress, um, you think you did the best you could? Yes. Okay. Well, was there anything you were hiding? Hiding? No. Yeah. Of information? No information I was hiding. And you weren't trying to be deceitful to anybody? No. Okay. But you weren't perfect? I was not perfect. Okay. And part of it is because, tell me if this is true or not, part of it is because you learned about things as they progressed versus what you were able to see. Correct? Correct. All right. So in other words, you learned about the first shot through the phone conversation with your husband, Alan, and Jeremy, the Border Patrol guy, that you got the phone for, right? Correct. And you heard there was a shot fired. I heard him say that. So he's reporting it. To Jeremy, right. yes. So when you testify, there wasn't a... Was there something? No? Okay. When you testified that there was no shot that you heard, it wasn't because you didn't know about it later or seconds later, but it was you could only testify to truthful information. Correct. To what you know. To what I know and so. Okay, and you will continue to do that as we talk. Yes. So going back, you've been married that many years, and then you said you got married after college. Correct. What was your degree? Elementary education. Did you go on to become a teacher? Yes, I did. What, just briefly, but what age group did you mostly teach? Well, I was very fortunate to teach in Hardin, Montana, and it was a, a three-room schoolhouse. There were two teachers, one one through three and four through six. And I was fortunate enough to be able to work with the other teacher in, uh, cause I'm not very good at math or distances and she loved math. So she taught math and I taught reading and English. So this would be elementary level up through sixth grade? Correct. Okay. They still have schools that small? <laughs> I'm sorry. One room school rooms? Well, it was, uh, there were two, three rooms. She had a room, I had a room, and then there was the lunch room, recreation room. Pretty small. Um, okay. And then what did Alan get as far as the degree? Alan's degree was in biology. Um, he had all kinds of courses because the plan was he wanted to be a veterinarian and go on to vet school. 
And so he was like a pre-vet major, biology major, is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Did he get any more advanced education after that? No. Okay. And what hindered his plans? I told him, uh, I guess it was about April, after we were married there in August, and I said, I'm pregnant. And so our plans had to change because back in 1970, you could not teach school if you were pregnant. You could not substitute. If you were showing, you, were, you, you could not have a job. So therefore, he had to support us because the plan was for me to teach and him to finish his education. So what did he go on to do for his work at that point in time? Well, he was hired by um, the Fish, Fish and Wildlife Service, and he was a fishery biologist. Okay. And how long did he work in that position? Oh, let me think. He, he retired, he quit that in 81 and he started it in 71. So how was that? 10, Ten years? years? Okay. And I did the math. <laughs> what state was that? It was, it was, we were in North Carolina at the time. Okay. And then he got, his job was in Eastern Tennessee, out of Gatlinburg. He was in the Smoky Mountain National Park. That's where he performed that, those duties? Yes. Okay. It's a pretty and area. then what created the next change? What did he do next? Well, the uh, state Supreme Court declared that the Bighorn River did not belong to the tribe, but belonged to the state because it was a navigable river. So now it's state property and he doesn't have a job. They went into move into an office and that would have never worked for him to be in an office. So he uh, got his outfitter's license and we he would take fishermen on the river and bird hunters. Okay, so now you're in Montana. Yes, it is. this was in Montana. Okay, and so your dream at first was like he gave tours or guided tours of fishing for people that came up there and bird hunting. That's correct. Okay. And then ultimately you saved your money and opened up a lodge? Correct. Okay. Um, when he brought people out to hunt, was he um, a big advocate of teaching uh, safety with guns? Yes, he was. And he would, tell me about that real quick. Well, he would have them out in front of the lodge. Um, maybe doing some kind of target practice or whatever to make sure that they knew how to, to shoot. And he, and he was also very um, strict on about telling them not to shoot at anyone, but to shoot at the birds. And so um, that was basically his duties. Okay, so as he gets in the groups, he went through that with each one to assess their ability and safety ability. That's okay. correct. Okay, careful, let me finish my sentence. All right, and um, but you two made a pact. After so much time, you wanted to address your dream. And what was that again? You wanted to move here? The reason I wanted to move here? Well, you told him from the beginning, you could do this for so long, right? And then you wanted to, for him to commit and let you have a chance to live in Arizona. Is that true? True. Okay, and so at some point in time, did that happen? Yes, it did. Obviously, you're here now. Right, okay. I got my wish. <laughs> so he basically said, if you let me do this for so long, I'll, I will let you, let us move to Arizona for your wishes. Yes, and we first just came here in the winter, because okay. Montana winters are cold. Well, you found your way as south as you can get because you noticed there was snow in the Arizona northern parts, right? That's correct. We were looking for property and we went out toward Prescott, beautiful country, but they had snow. I said, Alan, I'm not leaving Montana 
to come to the Arizona snow. I won't <laughs> get warm. Okay. So no that's where we ended up here. You're at the bottom of the state. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so you, this particular piece of property, you've owned for how many years now? The, which property? The one you're on now. The one we're on now, we purchased in 2001. And uh, we were still had our home in Canela. But we would, you know, come over here and spend weekends and stuff. And because um, we had we had a trailer uh, RV, we could drive over here and spend weekends. But um, we purchased some property in Keno Springs area in 1999. Okay, were you kind of a uh sharing where you stayed between more than one property at one point? Yes, we would spend the winters down here and we spent the summers in Montana. Okay. And then ultimately you were totally down here? Yes, we, we've sold a place in Montana in 16 and because it was a three day trip one way and three day trip back and we were just not able to physically to, to do that okay. at our age. Okay. And there, the house that you're living in right now, you had it built, correct? That's correct. So you brought the property, uh, but there was no dwellings on the property. Is that right? There was no, well, no dwellings or anything on the property. And the first thing you had built was your barn? First thing they built was the barn, but I'm trying to decide. I think we had the, the well put in before we built the barn. All right, so it's important to get water to the property. That's correct. Okay. And but as far as living or the ability to live on anywhere on the property, were you living in the barn first? Yes. Were you living with your RV in the barn? Correct. Okay, so it's a good sized barn. Oh, yes. And then eventually you had your house built. Yes, we built it, started building it in 2008, moved in in February of 09. And this is a single story dwelling, correct? Correct. And we saw some pictures earlier, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and then once you had the house built, you quit living in an RV. Where is your RV? Do you still have it? We have an RV that is parked up in um, the mountains of okay. Arizona. Okay. And now you're living in the home and you're still living in the home. Oh, yes, we're still living in the home. That's our primary residence. Okay. Um, you already discussed the animals, but over time you had different amounts of animals, some of which you were caring for other people, like their cows. Yes. And would you agree that it is important to keep your fencing together? Yes. And why? Because the cattle get out, then they're on someone else's property. And um, out here, you kind of you always try to keep your cattle where it's supposed to be because everybody has problems with grass. And they have a certain amount of animals they can keep on their property and if yours get out and get on there that's not good so a neighbor would not take it kindly if your cows ate their grass especially that's in, sorry that, especially, sorry let me finish especially during times that it's more drought like get Correct. off my lawn and that's so you, that would be very neighborly would it it would not be neighborly to allow them to get on their property and so would you say Alan took responsibility of checking his fence line regularly? Yes, he did. And repairing it when there was no one else to repair it. That's correct. Did he assist other people to help him repair it? We had someone helping until, let's see, I can't remember now the two years we had the big drought down here. In the, in the summertime, and uh, we had to, uh, he had help before that, when okay. we had all the cattle there. 
He got someone, possibly a young person, to assist with some of this hard labor. I'm sorry. Did he assist? Did he solicit young younger people to help him with some of the hard work? He did have. We did solicit some young, sweet young boys up at, from the village, and they would come out and mow the grass and trim the weeds and things like that. Um, now. Let me, before I forget, I just want to ask this before I go on with the story. Uh, is Alan right-handed or left-handed? Left-handed. If he was to eat dinner with a fork, which hand would he use? Left. If he was to write something on a piece of paper, which hand would he use a pen with? Left. If he was to shoot a gun, would he hold it like a right-hander or left-hander? Left-hander. So he's very dominant left. Yes. Um, now, you have a couple sons, but they haven't lived here. They have their own families and careers, correct? Correct. So it's just been the two of you on this property. Correct. And obviously, you're not getting any younger, correct? Correct. Now, Alan's use of weapons doesn't surprise you that he would have some around, correct? I'm sorry. The I fact didn't... that Alan keeps weapons around, that doesn't surprise you, does it? No. Matter of fact, you testified about you having a handgun. Yes, right? I, I did. Have you ever had to use it on your property for any reason? I have. For what reason? I shot at coyotes that were try, trying to tree my cat. Okay. Uh, is it also a safe thing to have on you for rattlesnakes and other varmints that might be there? Yes, when I used to walk out there alone with just the dogs, I would wear it because I probably couldn't kill the snake, but I could make a lot of noise and hope he'd run away. And also, we have a lot of javelina out there, and uh, they can get very aggressive with the dogs and people. So you just testified that you used to walk. Tell me about that. When did you used to walk? Well, when we moved in the house in 2009, I would walk and... Oh, I just get up in the morning, take a walk with the dogs, and be gone for about an hour or so. And um, Would this I enjoyed be, it very much. Sorry to cut you off. Thank you. Would this be on your property? Yes, it's all on our property. How many acres do you own? One hundred and seventy ish. So you can go in all kinds of directions and walk an hour without a problem. I could go in any direction I wanted to, and there was no problem except for the wildlife. Okay. And why did you stop walking? Or did you? I did stop walking. How come? Um, I got frightened. Okay. Um, frightened on your property? People, yes, people started coming on our property I can't remember if it was December of 2020 or if it was early in 21 that uh, there were people walking on our property dressed in a, like in military garb and um, carrying rifles. Okay. Now, would you say that Alan tried to protect you a lot of, you know, about what was going on on the property? Yes, he did. But were you aware? Were you aware what was going on on your property? I was aware of some things. I'm sure he didn't tell me everything, but I would I would be aware if the Border Patrol came out there and said, we want to go down to the barn, we got spotted some folks down there, or other things like that, the incidents that uh, happened, he would tell me, but I'm sure he didn't tell me everything. Thing that went on. But you were aware. But I was aware there was a lot going on. Okay. Yeah, and so much that I would not go walk by myself anymore. Did you see signs like campsites, clothing left behind, stuff like that? Yes, they were down in the, I call it the wash, you probably call it the arroyo, but this down there in the wash, you, when I would walk with or without Alan, you could walk down there and you could see where they had left clothing or 
and garbage and water bottles and some other things that I won't tell you. Why? Use condoms. Okay. So all kinds of things were found. Yes. Not on the thumbnail, And they didn't have permission to be on your property. No. And clearly they had to come through some fence line or something to get on your property. That is correct. Have you ever tried to, are you aware of any signs on the property, no trespass, things like that? Yes, there are no trespassing signs posted several places. I don't know all the places because I went with Alan and I put out a few of them, but he put out a lot. However, it's a large area and that's hard to cover every single strand, correct? Correct. But you did your best. But we did. He did. Thank you. Um, so you quit taking walks. And so what are you doing? Just staying in the home unless you're with Alan outside? Correct. Now, let's start talking a little bit about your property. May I go to the easel? Are we doing Pictionary? Because she's not guessing. Right, I'm going to slant this a little bit. Are you able to see this? I can see the top part. Does this help a little bit? Yes, that helps very much. All right. As much as I would like this to be a little bit wider, I'm going to condense it. Try to reflect everything in proportion. I'm going to draw at the bottom your house. It appears to be somewhat of a rectangle shaped house, is it? It's more of an L shape. L shape. Okay. And if I was to draw the L, if this is your backyard, this uh -huh. is your patio, uh -huh. would the L go downward or stick up into this direction? The L goes long in the front of the house and then deep on the right hand side of the house. Okay, but I'm in the back. Would it be straight across your backside? And you're in, you want to know how to draw it if you're looking at it from the back? Yes. Okay. Make the L backwards. Would the L go down or up? Just, just straight, like, well, go down and over on your bottom of your, where you want to draw the house. Okay, so I'm trying to show just the back side. Okay, so I'm Oh, just the back side? Yes. She was so not part of the The patio will be back here. Okay, the patio will be there. Yes. And it's just a straight line. Thank you. So a rectangle would be fair, correct? Because you can't see the L shape. Correct. Right. So I'm just going to... I think the cameraman's worried about knocking the, the audio cable out, so he doesn't want to touch the camera anymore. <laughs> He's, if they've got a, uh, a bad cable, I, want to, I drew a rectangle at the very you just don't want to touch it. Easel, okay? okay. Are you able to see it? Yes. Please, this is not picture you're in. I'm going to do my best. What? They're listening to us, guys. Okay. Now. Again, this is east. Okay? Correct. So your patio's coming off of this. Are you are you on the same page as me? Yes. Okay. When I want to put a few things in, in placement, okay? Just to have a perspective. So there is a uh, place where you have a fence and different fences, where do you park? We park on the west side of the house. Okay. If you're looking at east, 
then a, the we park on the west side. We'll be in the front, under the board. Under the under the rectangle, yes. Okay. And where's the driveway? Does it come up from down below and come up a little bit? Well, the driveway that we go into the garage comes straight off. We come down the gate and straight in. Now that when we have visitors, we have a road in front of the house or a path that goes in and makes it a, 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 a circle. And, uh, and would that be reflected? Would you be able to see that from looking this way? Um, it would be on the right side of your triangle. Okay. So it would be fair to say here is where your parking might end for get guests. Right. Down below that would be your garage and where you would park. All right. Okay. Now, do you have a pergola or some kind of balcony um, item that's out there that like protects you from the sun? Yes, we have a, when you first come out of the patio door there, you walk and there's some pavers and then you go up a couple steps and there's a concrete slab with a purge over it and that's where I have my outdoor tables and sitting chairs. So you talked about two doors, right? On the Correct. Side of the middle. Now, there was a door in your master bedroom, right? Correct. And then you have another door that was off the hall, correct? Correct. All right, I thicken the lines there to reflect the doors. And then I'm going to put two little X's on this wall because they were your windows at the house, right? Correct. Okay. And you have a window on the side of the house too, don't you? Yes, we do. We have a picture window facing the and driveway. And doors. So, and another door. And another door. Okay. Now, do you have a, a fence lying anywhere on this property? Yes, we have fence lines. Okay. Let's. You said you were terrible at measurements, but you've gone out there now and, and revisited that topic on measuring. But you have a fence line. What is it made out of? I'm sorry? What's the fence made out of? Barbed wire okay. and post. Does it come perpendicular to your house or parallel to your house? Parallel. So if I drew a fence line across, would that be about right? Yes. Is it your only fence line? No. Where's the other fence line? Well, the fence line that's closest to you goes back towards, you know, not right at the house, but it goes back behind the house that Close way. Down. Yes. And then there's also a fence from where that fence line ends, there's fencing down, so I like up away from the pergola, no, on the on the right hand side. Yeah, you go there. There's a fence line right there down to the other fence Cross. line. No. Come on, can I have the witness step down? Come on down. Now the cameraman has to follow. The cameraman's been lazy. It's like they switched cameramen. Maybe the previous one got in trouble. Maybe they finally uh, cracked down and said you can't you do to that. Go ahead and help me with this drawing. So what I would like for you to do is finish drawing those bob wire fence that you would see from the back of your house. Okay. Goes down here. Senator, I think we probably need a microphone for the witness. There's one right here, Tess. Just turn it on. I'll try to hold it for you while you're drawing. Okay. The fence line runs down this way, and then it goes back around this way, over on the property the other way. Way over there. Okay. So here's your first fence line. Here's your second fence line. And is there another fence in the median area? No, not until we get to the edge of the property up here. Okay. Now, is there a wash or, 
or something in the backyard as you look out from here? Well, when you look out, you can't see it because okay. it's is down there a wash up in there. It is a wash. It would be probably down in here somewhere. Okay. This is not proportioned, right? All right. If I made this area perfectly to scale. If I made this area about this wide, would it be just as far to get to the wash or shorter distance to get to the Arroyo? To the Arroyo, it would be longer distance. All right, let's, let's revisit that line a little bit wider. Then. Okay. How many lines do you want me to draw? No, that's good. Okay. So you had... Somewhere there was a ladder that assists someone to climb up and over the first fence line. Is that correct? Yes. All right, let's take a black pen. And let's just draw like a little ladder. I know, is it true the ladder goes up and then you got to take this other ladder and climb down? And that goes over a barbed wire fence. That goes over the barbed wire fence. All right, rather than trying to draw both, both sides, just put a ladder somewhere in the, approximately in the house where it would be. Right in here, right in here is where our pump, pump house is, and the ladder is right in here. Again, this is not quite proportioned. Okay. General ideas. Okay. And... So tell me, can you climb that ladder and get over that fence? No. Yeah, I will no. tell you, I think, I the, micro, I think the microphone was for the witness. Okay, I've never been able to climb over that because I have two bad knees. And at Alan's age, would it be difficult for him to climb over it now? Now he does not climb over it either because it's too difficult. Did he used to? When we first moved there in 09, yes. Is it basically a shortcut to get from this side of the house to get into this pasture area? That's correct. It's a shortcut. And what is this area used for? For our horse, for our horse Sonny. He usually uh, comes up here. Come, there's a gate. Let's go ahead and draw the gate. There's a gate here, here, and here. And Sunday, we a lot of times leave that one open, especially at night, because Sunday comes up here, we feed him back here, and then at night he likes to go down to the Arroyo, where it's warmer in there, and he's got some trees and stuff. So Sunday would go this way and go down there. Okay. So to get out of the second bob wire fence, do you need to, unless you go under, Bob wire, uh, do you need to come out of the area and go through a gate to get back in the next area? A gate. In other words, can you cut through the bob wire unless you go under it, right? You have to go under it or over it. Right, which is not safe with bob wire, right? Correct. So if you were walking to get around to get to this area, how would you do it? Uh, if I was in here and I... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, if I were here and I wanted to get over here, I would go down here and walk through this gate. So you would go this way on the property, go correct. through a gate, and then you could come back into this area. That's correct. Unless you climbed the bob wire or went under it. That's correct. There's no gates in between. No. Okay. Now, I think the bailiff is sleepy too. Did you have a chance later to locate where the deceased was? I was shown where the deceased was later, yes. Was there initially markings left for people to find it? Tags on trees or anything? Uh, there may have been a piece of tape in the tree or a Coca-Cola can or something. It was not marked very well. In direction of the house, again, not perfect. Where was the body found? Okay, it was outside this fence and down in here. Okay, now do 
Look at your patio, look at your doors and your windows. Mm -hmm. Is that about right? Here. Okay, so we're beyond the second fence. Yes. Okay. And yes. We and we still have property down here and a road and everything else, right? Correct. Correct. All right. Now, would you say you were standing in your house through your windows? Yes. Would you be able to see this location of this where the body was later found? No. Why not? Too many trees. Okay, what else? Also, the, the terrain goes, it goes so from my patio, goes like this, and then it goes down like that to the wash. Okay, backwards this way? Yes. Okay, so would you say the elevation at this wash, and I'm going to just put these lines across and call it a wash, okay? Okay. With the elevation here be lower or higher than where the house is? Lower. Okay. Would the elevation here in the wash be lower than where the body was found? Yes. Okay. Um, so there's literally a ditch there, right? Yes. And during the rainy seasons, water fills that area? I haven't seen it because I haven't been here and we had a drought. I was hoping to be able to see it, but yes, I've been told that there, it runs through there and you can tell because it washes the sand out of the wash and over our concrete drive part where we put over the wash to get down to the barn. Let's draw with your black pen the uh, patio covering up. See, right here is a door. It would be in here. Okay. And you have, you said, like little pavement type stuff, bricks or something to reflect a patio in this area. Yes. And do you have chair or seating or benches or tables underneath there? Underneath pergola? Yes. Yes, I have a. I have uh, two tables. One's a uh, seat six people over here with, you know, just regular patio furniture and chairs with cushions on them. And then over on this side, I have a beautiful concrete table with benches. Okay. Is there also a, a large smoker out here or something that would be in the way? Yes. Is there a box item that could be found out there? Yeah, but, but my line's too close. It would be right here before you get to that. Adjust your board. Uh, it's about right here. It's a big pit that we had, and it's got concrete sides around it. We've got a grill on it so we can grill and smoke eggs or turkeys. We smoked them with turkey at Thanksgiving. It was very good. If the ground is the bottom of it, could you use your hand yep. and show about how high it is? About, yeah, it's about this high. Waste For me. Time. Yeah, for me. Okay. Your waist is appropriate. Um, now, this road that later you testified you were able to look out the window or something and see Alan walking towards the barn, where would that be on this? Okay. Again, not to size. No. Well, and then it goes the, it goes all the way down, crosses the crosses the wash, goes on over here and goes to the barn. And would you agree there's different elevations there? Yes, you go down in the wash, then you go uphill to this, and then you go down to the barn. That could account for why someone would be no longer visible? 
Yes. I mean, if you're here and it goes up and then down, would you, could you lose a person? Yes. As far as eyesight? Yes, you could. Right. But so is that the... It's not a flat, straight shot to the barn that you can see. From my from house? house? From the house? No, I cannot see the barn from my house. Actually, it's, it's too far to see. It's too far. And then the terrain keeps you from seeing. Correct. And the elevation keeps you from seeing. Correct. But you saw them walking in that direction. I saw them walking this way. Okay. Now, you said you changed your measurements as to how far they were. What about in relationship to, I think we cut off, okay, no. the, in relationship to the, the uh, first or second fencing or gate, where were they when you saw them? Looking out the window, picture where you are. I'm right here. I looked through the pergola, right out here, and there were two guys right here, just inside that first lot fence. Were they close to the fence? Yes. Okay. Well, definitely on the other side. Definitely on the, in Sonny's pasture. Okay. Now, and you would call this Sonny's pasture? Well, that, I do, I don't know. That's, That's just, what you would call it. Yeah. Okay. Is this Sonny's pasture out here? Yes, Sonny has rooms rung, all over the acreage. <coughs> but, but when he's ready to be fed, he will come in here and go over here. Now, did anybody of law enforcement ask you to show you where these people were? And I'm talking about did the detective, did the officers at the scene, did the border patrol at the scene, anybody ask you to point or show you where these people were? No. So you guessed. So I guessed. Based on the distance. And as I said, I was measuring it by TV. When you, they have the cameras and show the football field, but it's about that. Yeah, that was about that high. But an actual football field, I told you, I have not been on in 34 years. So, so yards would have been inappropriate. Feet would have been better. Correct. But you know for sure it was on the other side of the first fence. Yes, because there are three metal posts right here, and they were walking right there behind him. Okay. And which direction? Switch fence. Okay. Which direction? Put an arrow. Which direction were they headed? Spark it. There you go. Okay. Alright, let me picture arrow a little bit for you. Is that correct? Yes. So they are not heading east. They're definitely on in the between the two fence lines. Correct. And so they are heading south. South direction. South, yes. Right. Now to go towards the wash, that would be a little bit southeast. Yes, yes. Oh, whoops. Sorry. Right over in here would be the southeast part. And then west would be down. Yes. Okay. When you saw Alan, we're going to go through the story here in a minute, but you definitely saw him on the road. I did. So whoever these people were, we're heading in the southerly type direction. Correct. And ultimately, possibly southeast. Correct. But when you saw them, they were parallel to the fence. Correct. And they continued for the moments that you saw. For the few moments I saw them, yes. Who saw them first? Alan. So when you had a chance to finally look out the window, you could only see two. Correct. But then more people could have been ahead of it, correct? Correct. Because he saw it first. Correct. So he saw, I don't know which person, but he saw one and then when maybe I'm curious, looked out and I saw these two right here. And you later heard that he claimed there were about five people. 
I heard that later, yes. But he didn't say, I saw five people. He's, he said he saw people. The warning was he heard a shot. Okay, but that wasn't immediately. That came no. Moments later. He just said, be quiet. And I guess he didn't want me to scream or anything and whatever, and alert that we knew they were there. Uh, and so when I looked out the window and I saw those two, I don't know how many were this way. I did not go to the other window and look. Okay. All right, why don't you have a seat for All right. I'm awake now. This is R.A.'s home, but she won't get me any Mountain Dew. the house and out here on your patio door. If you were standing out there and you have the deceased uh, out here, out, let's see, where were we? Well, we moved, we yeah. We moved the fence. Let's fix it. That's confusing. Again, not to scale. Correct. And then somewhere out here is a deceased person. Correct? I've labeled it D for deceased. All right, okay. correct. All right. Now, this is not in proportion, but you testified just a few minutes ago that from the house window, you would not be able to see this location. That's correct. If you stepped out on your patio right here, would you be able to see that person out there? No. If you put camouflage clothing in color, like tans or light greens or whatever color they had on, would that make it even more difficult to see that person? I would think so. So in order to shoot that person, you would have to shoot due east when the persons that your husband was tracking was heading south, correct? Correct. No mention of someone out in the field at this time. You don't even know about this. Don't know about them, yes. As far as you know, he didn't know about it because how could you see it, right? Right. Now, the reason for Alan, say be quiet. Is that to not alert anybody? Correct. Okay. Now you're in the house, and let's let's put up a photo first before we go there. Uh, publish defendants. KK. I'll do it with the machine. Ooh, pictures. Okay, can you see that one? Yes, I can. This has already been admitted into evidence. This is the person that's taken this photo, whoever it is, is standing on your patio to the right side. Would that be accurate? If the house is behind you? I think they would be standing on the porch. Okay, I think a porch and patio to me is the same. But I'm okay, right. well the porch runs a long ways and the patio just goes like this. Okay. I didn't know there was a difference. Okay, <laughs> it's fine. But they're sitting at, they're standing right, the house would be immediately behind them. Correct. And, but they'd be a little bit off to the right. As you face the direction, your door would be a little bit to the left and behind you? Correct. Okay. 
Um, and it is important that we communicate. So if it's confusing, I didn't ask it right, just let me know. Now, a lot of stuff out there, isn't there? <laughs> there is. And it would be way back there, this location of the deceased, correct? It would be way back. But if I was to point to the screen, I'm going to put my pen out there, assuming you can look out the window, and I would be pointing to the right with my pen. That was the direction of what was alarming the both of you at this time, right? Right. Nothing out there, way out there. No, we didn't know they were there. And you didn't know. I didn't. Right. And so if you keep going to the right, eventually you would get to your, that road that allows you to eventually head east again, and then ultimately wind around through the different terrain up to your barn. Correct. And you can't even begin to see it out there, right? No. And there's no houses out that way, is there? No. Nothing close? Nothing. So any mishaps of shots, you would not expect anyone to have a rightful reason to be there, correct? Correct. Because this is your property you're looking at, right? Correct. What are we looking at on this photo? Same exhibit. That's the close-up of the uh, barbecue grill that we smoke on and a bench seat on the other side of the barbecue. Let me point to something on the screen. Can you see my hand okay? You see a post? Yes. Okay. Can you see my hand okay? You see a post? Yes, I see the post right by over the left-hand part of the barbecue. Is that the post that carries the barbed wire? That is the post that carries the barbed wire. Is that the, fir the first fencing that you would see or come across from the house? Correct. And so you're saying someone was just on the other side of that? Correct. Two people? Two people that I saw. Two guns? Two guys and two guns. And again, they're walking to the right. Correct. Parallel to the fence. Correct. Let me show you a side picture of it. I think you can figure this. Well, no, this is the rear. Let's, again, let me change that. Strike that. Here's the side. What does that little yellow sign say? Yes, I can. Same, same exhibit. What are we looking at? Well, you're, this is the edge of the, the wall that I have around my front yard. I took, had Alan, when we built the house, put me a wall there so I could have some plants in there. And I didn't want to look out at weeds all the time. And then you see to the left where that concrete wall ends, then you're back over here with the smoker. And I'm going to point to it. Tell me if this is still the smoker. Yes. Okay. And then if you go kind of like 2 o'clock on, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock on, you would be heading east through your field, correct? You said, I mean, explain about the 2 o'clock. If I go in this direction, we're on an angle, right? Is that going out into the field? If you go at an angle, you head toward the other fence, the second fence. Okay. Now we can see the first fence in here still, right? We can see more posts going across. I do. Okay. Under the leaning tree branches. And All right. You got a pretty big, big sized tree right out your back door. Isn't that true? Correct. Another obstacle in the way, correct? Correct. And another 
another photo from the same grouping of evidence. All the branches in the way. Does this show the terrain looking out? I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. Does this show the terrain, what We're the environment sorry. looks like looking out? Correct. And is this to the left still the smoker? That's correct. And you can clearly see the fencing here, even though the camera may be zoomed a little bit, but it's right there, isn't it? Yes, it is. And these people are right on the other side of it, right? Correct. The fence is right along the line where the grass is taller on one side and short on the other. The fence is right in that line. Is he referencing this grass? Yes. Okay. And so if you were tracking these people to the right, this picture would be tracking with it, wouldn't it? Correct. This would be if your house is behind you, out the back door, to the right from the house behind you, this would be following the direction of the two people you saw. Correct. And just to finish up this grouping, right off your porch or patio, whatever you called it, there is a little area here. Yes. And you do planting in there? Do, I? do you do planting in there? Yes, we had a huge prickly pear right there. You can see on the right hand side near the bottom, there's some scrubby stuff with rocks. What happened to that prickly? The prickly pear was right near that and it died. And so we so dug it out and planted a rose bush. illustration why I'm up. Let's see here. How can I do it? If I said this is the cutout right here, and the cutout is describing an area where you can look into the other room and out the windows, correct? Mm -hmm. And that's a yes, right? Yes, correct. The court reporter. Sorry, ma'am. Then there's a wall, and you have a refrigerator over here if you're in the kitchen. Correct. And then there's a bar right here, or a, yeah, a bar, what would you call it? I call it an island because you island. walk around it. The island. If I was in the middle of the two, would I be able to access both? Correct. So whether you said it was an island or you said it was the cutout, it would be an accurate story, wouldn't it? Yes. Because you're right here and you can reach both and work with both, correct? Correct. So you're eating lunch, you ate lunch, and he came in to eat lunch, is your testimony, correct? Correct. And he makes this nasty sandwich, right? Yes, That's he good. does. Okay, let me finish my sentence. Her and words, her words. you, after eating, allowing him to do that, you went into the living room, correct? Correct. He said he didn't need any help making his sandwich, so I walked around into the living room. Okay. Now, if the cutout was where I just illustrated, in front of the first two jurors there. Correct. And then the kitchen uh, continues with a refrigerator and a wall, right? Well, the if that's the cutout, now, I have to get my bearings. If this is the cutout, are you gonna be standing in the kitchen? Yes. Or are you, are you and so you're gonna be standing in the kitchen looking into the living room? Okay, let's make sure we're communicating. That's correct, because I've got to figure out which location is where your refrigerator is. I'm in the kitchen. Correct. I'm 
looking at the cutout, I'm eating my sandwich. Okay. Okay. Can I look into the living room? Yes. Can I look onto the TV? Yes. Can I look outside the windows? Yes. If I walked a little bit this way, the cutout stops. Correct. And what do we have here? The refrigerator. Okay. And eventually the wall will end, correct? Correct. What will be right here? Your dining room table? Your kitchen table? Kitchen table would be over here. That's the kitchen cutout kind of over here. All right. Wait a minute. You say this, the, the refrigerator is where you are, then the dining room table, yes, would okay. be right beyond that. And your sinks will be over here, is that right? Correct. Okay, now are you acclimated? And yes, yes, I'm sorry. That's okay. After all this, the okay. jury tour better include inside then the house. you got a full wall. Correct. And you got a refrigerator. Correct. And your dining room table is out here to the right. Here. Yes. But you got a doorway right here. Right? Correct. And you could go into this room through this doorway, right? Correct. That would be the only way to get in, correct? That's correct. From this location of the kitchen. Correct. Okay. And then we see, and we saw some photos earlier, a couple of cha uh, chairs, a recliner chair and another chair, right? Correct. Okay. Now you I still don't know why, why we drew a picture room. instead of looking at the photos. And you testified earlier that you're petting your cat. Correct. And she's on top of the bigger reclining chair, which was Alan's chair. Correct. And she likes that little cushy spot. Correct. And so you're paying attention to her. Is it a her or him? It's a her. Okay, you're pay paying attention to her, the cat. What's the cat's name? Missy May. Okay, Miss Missy is on this chair and you're pitting it and then that's when you get interrupted to be quiet. Correct. Okay. At that time, you know Alan's in the kitchen and you know that he's there by that by look that cutout, right? Correct. Okay. So Alan, what direction is does he come out of the kitchen? Yes, after he told me to be quiet. He came out of the kitchen, past me, where I was at the chair, and he said, I, well, I don't know what your question is. Okay, but that's fine. That's where you get alerted. Yes. And he starts to react. Yes. Okay. And then when you're informed to contact, get the phone and call Jeremy, the Border Patrol agent. He's your liaison, isn't he? Correct. He's the go-to person when there's issues. Correct. And and you know and aware that that's a regular thing to have to do is to contact Jeremy. Correct. Not the sheriff's. No, it's Border Jeremy. Patrol's issue. Okay. And Border Patrol is your liaison and your contact. Correct. And they advise you? Is that true? They do. They did advise us in the past, yes. Okay. So you knew you could count on their advisory opinions, right? Correct. You report things that you all see. Yes. They report things that they see. Correct. And so this is what you both knew to do. Correct. And where did you get his number? It was on the front of the refrigerator. So I had to walk from the living room at the chair where my cat was around to face the refrigerator and dial the number. Okay. Meanwhile, Alan's heading towards the little hallway and to the back door, correct? Correct. And you're trying to get him on the phone. Did you say, hello, Jeremy, hold on? Or did you just pass the phone upon hearing his voice? I dialed the number, quickly walked towards where Alan was, and when Jeremy answered it, I just passed it to him. I didn't, don't remember saying anything to Jeremy. Okay. And then Alan took it, and that's when you were able to hear a little more information about what he saw. Yes. Which included a shot. He heard a shot. Correct. Okay. And he's reporting it. Yes, he is. And he's acting very concerned. Correct. And you know when Alan's concerned, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I mean, he's a, he's a kind of a man's man, isn't he? He's what? 
He's kind of a man's man. Doesn't That's like correct. Play. That's correct. He doesn't like to show emotion. No. But you know. He does. I know what his emotions are. Okay. You live there long enough with him. Correct. And when he's concerned, do you get concerned? Oh, yes. Okay. After he finishes the call, is it, is it a quick call? Very quick. Okay. After he calls, and, or it speaks with Jeremy, and he does speak with him, right? Correct. You could hear your, your husband's voice telling him what's going on. Correct. And then he passes the phone to you, is that right? Yes, he hands it back to me. Okay. And he goes out the door after grabbing his rifle that's kind of leaning up against the wall. Correct. Is this gun, this rifle of his, which you know what it is, because he's told you, I'm assuming, can it be found at different places in the house depending on what door he comes in? Correct. Does he usually carry his rifle inside the house? He does bring it inside, and he'll hang it on the coat tree or put it somewhere because he doesn't carry it around in the house. Okay. And so depending how he comes in and whether he'll be going back out makes the difference on where the gun might be? Yes. Okay. In other words, if he's in for the night, he may put it somewhere else. Correct. He has a night spot. Okay. And so when he goes out at this point in time, I want you to really reflect. I want you to think back. What is going on emotionally with you right now? Tell me what you're really feeling at that moment. When he walks out the door. With the gun. You haven't heard of it yet. You heard Jeremy's call. I heard Jeremy's call. Alan walked out the door and I close, I'm closing the door, but I am absolutely terrified. Mainly these guys don't have permission to be on our property, but they're out there with these guns. And then Alan goes out to make noise. Okay, let's slow down a little bit. Okay. Before, as he's walking out, you now know there was a shot fired. Correct. Does that he told Jeremy you? that. Hold on, let me finish my sentences. I know it's hard. Does that heighten the situation? Does that elevate your concerns? Correct. Okay. So what was, oh, there's a guy there or a couple guys or whatever now becomes a shot fire. Correct. So, and I don't want to skip the part, but you did, as you testified with the state, walk around a little bit closer to the left window from within the house and looked out. And that's when you did see the two gentlemen. That's correct. Is there any doubt about the fact that they were in camouflage versus green or brown? There's no doubt. Okay. So you just couldn't remember whether it was a, like an army green or a light green versus a brown or a tan, but you knew it was camouflage clothing. Yes, you could see the camo. Okay. The pattern. Pattern, yes. Okay. And you could see the backpacks. I could see the backpacks. And you saw what appeared to be rifles. Correct. And you just don't know what kind. Just a rifle. <laughs> but you described it, it could have been like. It could have been. Mm -hmm. But you don't know the differences. I don't. And that's what you were trying to tell her earlier that's, in your testimony. That's correct. Okay. So you're doing your best to describe that to different people. Correct. But no doubt about the camouflage and the two men and the guns and the backpacks. No doubt about that at all. Okay. And you have been trying to tell everybody the same thing. Correct. But we got different, some different stories. Officers wrote different reports. Is it possible that they took what Alan might have said and put it where it was saying that you said something? Touching the article closer speculation. Any of the words Sustained. that were described, like the number five, you said you didn't say anything about five. Have you heard that number five coming from Alan? Right. Same, that's objection hearsay. Well, um, we'll come back to this after our mid-afternoon break. It's now uh, about 12 to 3. Why don't we come back and talk to you about three by 15 minutes. Make it three times. Make it twice. We're recess until three times.
We rise for the court because we're on break. Um, any light leaks? No, my eyes are, are good and, and secure still. I, I keep checking them in case something changes, but uh, so far so good. So as we as we wait for uh, court to resume, oh, I need to, on this one, I need to go up and fast forward. Now I'm live. Okay. Cool. All right. Cutting out the breaks on the Chad Daybell one as well. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. It's been slow. I, I don't know how else to say this. The bailiff is sleepy. I am sleepy. It's been slow. This has been this has been painfully slow testimony, and nothing new. This is just going over what her story was initially. I don't know why the prosecutor thought it would be a good idea to um, to play Pictionary with the map and try to guess which direction I should draw next. Uh, with a twisted aerial view of your house, it it was it was the worst idea ever. This is terrible. I, I, we have Google Maps galore. We have so many exhibits with different zooms of and layouts and and orientations of the map. You could just show it, and then you could say, "This spot on the map. If we were to stand at this spot, and then here's a picture on the screen. Is this an accurate representation of what we would see if we were looking that direction?" Boom. Done. It's like it's like she uh, just came up with this idea at the last minute and did no prep. It was like, well, we could either we could either get all the pictures printed up and, and ready to go, or or I've got an idea. We could just draw it on the, on the whiteboard in real time, and that will make more sense. It doesn't. It doesn't because she doesn't even. I mean, it it took what twenty twenty five minutes just to figure out they don't. The porch and the patio are two different things, and the defense didn't know. <laughs> so then they've been using it interchangeably. So it's dragging a little bit. It's going slowly. Did Daybell start? Yes or no? Uh, Daybell is uh, right here right now. They're on a break. Uh, we're watching that. I've, I've got it recording onto my, uh, my hyperdeck. They are still on uh, jury, jury selection, I believe. But uh, did hear from uh, Nicole Goodman that she's going to be in court starting tomorrow. She's going to be there at the Daybell trial. So that'll be interesting to, to get some updates maybe from her. Um, still don't think we're going to be following the whole thing. But uh, yeah, it's all good. Does anyone know how long the, uh, the Stabby Stabby Apple River uh, trial is, is supposed to go? What's the length of that trial? Let's see. Cool. <laughs> We're excited. We're excited to have somebody up there in the courtroom. It's going to be a good one. They said two weeks. Man. Okay. I don't. I don't think they're going to have jury selection done for Chad Daybell before the end of this week. I don't know if anyone else has called it Stabby Stabby Apple River, but that that is the name of that of that trial. you want to we can have time we can collaborate live after court that that would be cool it's going to be well it's idaho time what what time is it uh in idaho right now nicole um you see it's it's 5 50 right now we crystal we may go back and, and play catch up and watch the apple river but i i want this one to i want this one to conclude with a bang first of all either a mistrial or uh, directed verdict or something that could happen. It's three fifty. Okay, so two hours difference. It's three fifty in the, where the trial is going to be at, and we've got three hours difference in the trial we're watching right now, right? Yeah. Video evidence. Video evidence. Evidence is graphic in that trial. By the way, uh, do they show it, Lenova? Like there's there's like GoPro video or cell phone video of the stabbings, right? Yeah, that's that that could be problematic for our channel. I, I realize bigger channels can get away with it, but it could be problematic. So we'll have to figure out how to do that. Uh, 
Uh, defense. Oh, let me pop in on Daybell and see. They just came back from break. Give them just a minute. Let's let's just see what they're doing. Maybe they'll give us an update on how far they've gone or they're still doing. All right, this time questions. we're going to take up additional individual board dire with Dirge. We are back on the record on KCR 22-21-1623. Uh, my intention in order will be the front row farthest away to my left and then the back row in that same order. So the first juror we'll have drop back will be juror number 1112. Is the state ready to proceed with Fordar? Yes, Your Honor. Is the defense ready? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thanks everyone. And we'll start the bailiffs. Please bring that jury. Okay, so they're they're going to keep doing uh, that fun stuff. They've got two more rows of jurors to get through. I think that's all they're going to have time to today. Um, defense is putting Mrs. K in her comfort zone and walking her back through the events, emotions, details, telling their story through Mrs. K. They are, Mickey. They are, they're getting the benefit of having the, the story told by someone who was there without the defense taking the stand, without Mr. Mr. Kelly taking the stand. And maybe, maybe this is their whole plan. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> Adam. Um... That that's not gonna that's not gonna do anything. That's that's not. Uh, I, I think you misjudge our audience, Adam, or or, or grossly um, uh, overestimate my uh, my my physique. Uh, I'm not sure. They show everything. Oh wow. Oh my goodness. That that may. Here, here's the problem with the Apple River one. Here's here's the problem. Let me let me tell you. YouTube has tightened up on specific things, like in the last month. And I realize a, a big channel that has over a hundred thousand subscribers, they have a dedicated person, like a human, that you can call on YouTube and you can talk them over and say, Hey, review this manually, look at this, this is why we showed, this is what it was, this was the purpose. I am I'm not big enough to do that. I am still in the a computer decides what is right and what is wrong phase. Um, so that could be that could be really, really problematic um, because specifically fights involving youth is one area that uh, that YouTube is cracking down on. Hmm. Okay, uh, Robin, I could I could edit it out, but I'd have to. It just takes a lot more work on my hand, my ends to have feeds going at multiple timings so I can monitor one and cut away and it, it's a lot of stress and work on that one. Stabby Stabby Apple River sounds like jump rope rhyme. Now I'm, I'm not against doing it. I mean, I mean, it's, it sounds like the trial has some intriguing concepts and part of it, but we'll, we'll see. Since, well, if we're playing catch up, if we can, if we're playing catch up, I can censor it. Um, it gets a little trickier if we're if we're as live. The language is worse than the video and the pictures. I've heard it's it's pretty bad. Let's see. You see blood. frame by frame oh man okay uh all right will the court be going to the property yes or no if so when yes and today uh so casey the trial here in arizona is going to let out a little bit early and the prosecution and defense are going to hop on a bus together and they're going to play nice and drive all the way out there uh to the the ranch and the kellys are going to make everybody uh mayo, peanut butter, and pineapple sandwiches, and maybe maybe have a little glass of lemonade. They're going to sit out under the pergola and, and walk around and, and just check things out. Maybe someone will bring the metal detector and be like, hey, we finally found it. We found the bullet. Don't know. Maybe so. Uh, I don't think I don't think it will. But um, no, the, so the, the council is going first, and after they go, we, we expect the jury view will take place as well, and that will take... Probably right about the end of the state's the state's case, I think they'll do a jury view. With they go first without the jurors because prosecution has not been out there. It's it's still owned by the the Kellys. 
And there's, there's like no trespassing signs. And they're saying, no, get off our land. Uh, the prosecutors can't do a court order to just come check out their property whenever they want. But in this case, where there is a jury view, they do have the judge's permission and the, the, and the defense is working with them to, to arrange it. Robin, I, I wish I could go into all the things that are banned and not banned and what I think is ridiculous about them. But um, even uh, talking about the different words about what are banned and what isn't banned, um, I think can get us sort of flagged by the algorithm for review. I listened to some of the opening statements uh, while I was d demolishing the bathroom uh, last night, tearing the ceiling down. Demolishing the bathroom sounds like... Like a dumb and dumber, do not go in there type thing. It wasn't like that. It was not like that. It was literally demoing the walls and the ceiling. Uh, we've got this, our last break for the day, Ashley. I, we expect to have a little bit more, um, a little bit more testimony, and then they break early to go, to go out. So she might, um, I think she's going to be our only witness all day long. There probably is not a memorial on the private property. A uh, burnt out lawyer says, I don't like that the jury view will be in a different season than the homicide. Uh, it actually does favor the defense uh, to have basically we're, we're early spring we're some spring and summer right now, right? We're spring. Uh, so it's going to be springtime and things will be growing and probably the greenest that it's going to be, and the most, you know, as far as uh, as far as the the landscape and the look is going to be right in springtime because summertime it dries out and fall it's just dead. Uh, so so it will look greener. The grass will be taller. The grass will be probably more more upright and block the view more. There also are going to be some leaves on the trees, and that that's going to obscure the view uh, where where possibly it wasn't obscured back in January when this happened. Um, uh, believe it or not, uh, I wasn't born with thorns. As long as the, the F-bomb doesn't happen in the first, I think it's like 10 minutes of the video, um, YouTube just doesn't care. Uh, so a lot of times, maybe if you're watching um, FNF with Rob, <laughs> they, they tend to take it a little bit easy in the more, you know, in the early, in the first few minutes of the show, and then and then sort of let loose with with you know whatever happens happens later on in the show, and it's it's for that reason. Is the defendant in jail? No, he's out on bail, I believe. Can't I? I love the idea of their Apple River. I would love to do a, a personal view of the Apple River. With a metal detector. Uh, those rivers are absolutely phenomenal to metal detecting. Drunk people and water. Uh, it's just a recipe for jewelry to drop to the bottom. All right. Um, you mean winter, everything is on a live day. Yes. Thank you, Steve. With FNF, I think it's the first hour. I think you're right. I, I've never I've never had a timer going on mine. It might be the first hour. But uh I will tell you that that when we when we go live early and and sort of do our morning meetup and stuff beforehand before we start court, that helps protect the channel against if testimony in court opens with a bang. Um and because suddenly, you know, that that first hour they look at as far as monetization goes, much more strictly than than subsequent hours. I love private enterprises can charge to float down public rivers. America. Serious? Who charges you? I mean, let's, let's do a field, a meetup at the Apple River. Who, who charges you? I mean, I, I can see if they're renting tubes and stuff, but actually charging you to get on the river? Melpoy says, I can dive. Lost one of my favorite turquoise and on silver rings while tubing in Ogden Canyon. Oh man, that's some cold water there off the bottom of the the Pine View Reservoir, Donna. Um, beautiful river, and it's rough. It's rough too. So 
Unfortunately, there's there's probably probably no getting that back. That's the bad news. Uh, you mentioned you mentioned river metal detecting. Ever do any gat fishing? Gat fishing? Do you mean cat fishing? Because I've 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 done a lot of cat fishing, but gat fishing I'm not familiar with. You pay to rent the tubes. Okay, that, that's like renting a kayak. I, I'm willing to, to rent that. They charge for the tubes. You can bring your own tube though, right? And then you don't have to pay. What percentage of time do you get me demonetized? Teddy bear, 100% of the time if I show a police chase. 100% of the time. Why? Um, yeah. And it's not the show me your bleeping hands part. It's the fact that there's, there's the pew, pew, pews visible on the screen and immediately they're like oh that's out you pay for the ride back to the car rent to the tubes and pick up so so this is just this is america this is this this is this is great capitalism at its finest you've got you've got a public publicly available resource and you can make money off of it oh magnet fishing a little bit i've done a tiny bit i i was out with um you, if you if you're big into Metal, de metal detecting and magnet fishing and all that sort of stuff. Um, I got to go out with uh, Aqua Chigger. He's a, a YouTube sort of YouTube personality in that in that arena. Um, been out a few times with him, metal detecting and, and some of the other locals here. Um, when he comes down to town, we've I've been out and filmed him for a couple shows and just just had a blast with him. But he brought uh, a magnet for some magnet fishing. He also brought an underwater uh, camera, like a. It's on a cable. It's like a little submarine on a cable. That was pretty fun. Is the chat considered during the first hour? I think so. I, I don't know for sure. Does a catfish have nine lives? Uh, not if my neighbor catches them. He cooks them all up. And he, he brings it over cooked up little catfish bites. They're delicious. Uh, Patty says prosecution will arrest the end of this week. Prosecution will arrest at the end of this week, and then it's the defense's case, so probably a week and a half. I can't see the defense taking a whole week and a half. Uh, Melpoy. <laughs> yeah. There are more. It, it seems like every every couple of weeks, there's a, there's an update from the powers that be on, on this media social media platform. And they're like, we've updated the, you know, the rules regarding nudity. We've decided we're going to allow pretty much anything goes in, in, you know, as long as you say it's educational. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> but then they say, but if, if you show a video demonstrating how to safely operate a pew pew, that's a community strike. And three times and you're, you're banned. And it's, it's just, you know, they, they own the platform and they get to make the rules. Police hate magnet fishing. So many calls for old firearms. They hate it because of all the explosives you find, Ivan. Oh my goodness! Uh, here, I, I live in the in part of the country where the Civil War literally was fought. Okay, um, I I can drive by buildings that were that were ransacked during different raids. Um, there's you know it, there's battlefields around. It, it, I'm not like Gettysburg. But uh, it happened down here too. This was the, we're in the South, and, and battles were fought here. And there was, there's like there was a sunken you know Ironside just down down the river here on the Noose River that's up in a museum now, and it was full of cannon cannonballs and can, you know everything. And you can literally find fired cannonballs that haven't gone off. They're full of dynamite, whatever the, the charge, the gunpowder, and it it shot, and for some reason it was a dud and didn't go off. And so you dig the thing up, and even though it's been in the ground for forever since the war. It can go off at any time, okay? And so you just hope it doesn't go off while you try to, you know, dry it out and clean it up and drill it and then take out the gunpowder so you can then display it safely. YouTube has become more strict because kids watch it more. They're very strict about uh, if you're advertising, if your videos are targeting kids. And basically they, YouTube killed the very very lucrative side of the business on youtube where you were doing reviews for kids kids toys oh my goodness there were, there were kids that were making i kid you not millions of dollars a year getting companies sending them free toys to demonstrate on tv on on their show 
And, and now YouTube took away all the monetization for that. Oh, the stabber was actually snorkeling in two feet of water to look for jewelry because of his wife told him he could find some, but then he got in an argument with some drunk teenagers. So the, the stabber was, had my idea. I, I promise I, that was the only idea I had. I didn't have any stabby ideas. That's the whole world upside down. Okay. All right, we should be coming back from court to court here in uh, in just a few minutes. I'm not sure why we're talking about Civil War cannonballs, but uh, this is where we live, so nobody should have stabby ideas. <laughs> this is a uh, beautiful waterfall. This is the sort of thing that uh, that should be uh, cut out of, of vinyl and put on the wall. This should be, nobody should have stabby ideas is like a, a phrase that should be on everyone's wall. At home. Call from... AWOL. AWOL, my friend. It's been a few days since we've talked. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. I was dealing with some roots in my sewer pipe, so I had to... I was listening, but I couldn't be in chat for about two weeks. <laughs> I feel your pain. I feel your pain. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. I got... I know, I know you've been going through it, but uh, I have a question. Yeah. What is the defendant's story of why he went out there. I've, like I said, I've been in and out. I'm dealing with a lot. But he's, he's, I believe he said that there were two groups fighting against each other. Well, we've, we've heard two stories. Okay. And first, I'll tell you the theory of the defense. The first one is that it wasn't me. It was somebody else. Okay. I didn't shoot him. I shot up in the air. Somebody else must have shot him. And the second was, if I did shoot him, it was self-defense. Oof. Okay, <laughs> so um, the both have sort of been floated a little bit during opening statements, but most of this is it wasn't me, it wasn't me. That's what we've heard so far. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Um, that he fired up in the air and that was it. And so he he says he heard one shot while he was in the house and that sent him outside, and he fired the shots in the air to scare people off. But and then later they found a body. But man, the problem with this. The problem is that his wife is testifying that the guy was right up there next to the house where he could see him. And there were two of them, okay, and then, and and that sort of matches with what we've heard from from Daniel. Some of his testimony saying he was that close to the house, ten yards away or something like that. Uh, so, and now one of them is dead, and I don't know, I don't know. So it's uh, right. It's a tough one. Why did, did he, go he not say that he saw them with backpacks and? And pew pews. Yeah, he he thought they were drug mules immediately. He he said that's that's your drug mule, and he called, get ready so call, is, call the border this patrol. Is, this is why I'm having an issue with that because if he saw them with backpacks and pew pews, and they allegedly if somebody else did it, right? Mm -hmm. This is Arizona. I don't agree with what these people do, but the Sinaloa cartel runs Arizona. The closest competition is Juarez in Texas. So who, which cartel would have the audacity to have a meetup or a stick up in a state that they know the biggest cartel control? It would be a, so that is what has me. He's, ugh, he's basically saying there is probably a hit squad or somebody that tried to attack the smugglers so they could take the guns and the drugs or the cash, whatever it is, for themselves. Um, so yeah, it's somebody basically. He's alleging that somebody went against the cartel to. Uh, <laughs> to do that now the problem is they didn't find any drugs they didn't find you know any evidence other than the radio that 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 was what's going on it could have just been a scout so right but as the technology advances even if these were migrants and they have ham radios okay maybe i might lose you in the middle of the night or something who knows i don't know either way i'm still lost with this it's just the, the when he described this yeah big duffel bags, backpacks for pew pew. I'm like, this isn't narcos. Why would you have this stick up right on the border on U.S. land where extradition is now you committed a crime here? They would have handled that in Mexico. The, the fact is, when it comes to the drug trade, it's gotten a lot higher tech. We've got, we've got tunnels underground. We've got um, very sophisticated smuggling methods. The, the days of filling a backpack full of weed and paying somebody to cross the border uh, to make a few bucks, those are gone. 
It's just it, it, it. There's no money there. But uh, court's back. Hey, well, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to bail all here. All right, all right. It was good talking to you. I hope the bathroom works out. Likewise. Thank you. I fixed the sewer, so we're good. We out here. All I right. love chat. I love the channel. Bye. Thanks. See you, well. Bye. Right. Later. Yeah, it, it, to me, it doesn't make sense that they were drug mules. M much more likely that they were um, scouts for um, for s smuggling people across, because that is still, you know, very commonly done. Daniel was caught smuggling weed ten years ago. Rise Judge stays seating, seated. The court clerk stands up. Continue to engage on the same line of questions. Let's just start it over again so we can do a little rewind on the uh, question and the confusion. The confusion. Thank you. So there was uh, the state asked you questions in reference to what the different police officers wrote in the report. You remember all that? I remember the questions about the police officers' reports. Yes. Okay, and she showed you reports to review, and you denied saying some of that stuff, right? Correct. And the I used the example number five, uh, meaning five, at, at whether or not there were five people, five guns. I don't know. It was used in different ways, but and you said you didn't say that, right? I didn't say to get that to any police officers, no. Yes. So my question is... Is it possible that the five subjects that were running came from Allen's uh, statements to the police? Objection, foundation. It's a state, like when, where, what conversation? And your Honor, same objection if they're going to attempt to elicit hearsay testimony regarding what Mr. Kelly told, may or may not have told her. May I say something? Your Honor, this is not being offered for the truth of the matter asserted. It's being offered to show and, and to address the impeachment that the state tried to use. It wasn't a hearsay It's reflecting that she believes there were five people, but that those the, the different things that were stated came possibly from Allen and confused it. And Your Honor, that, that is for the truth simply of the not true because what they're asking for is a statement that they believe that Alan made, so it is being offered for the truth of the matter asserted, and whether there was confusion based on a statement they believe was made. Your Honor, that's for the jurors to decide those facts. Objections overruled. The objection to hearsay is overruled. The objection to foundation is sustained. Thank you. So it's not hearsay, but she still has to lay more foundation talking about where this statement might have been from Alan. Of course, the juries have heard, juries heard Do you it remember earlier that with Officer Monreal, that she, the, uh, the uh, prosecutor showed you the reports and wanted you to confirm or not confirm his report that said you saw five subjects? I remember that. Okay. And you denied that, right? Correct. But that number five has also been reflected with your um, husband, with Alan's statement that there were five people. Your Honor, objection, know. same objection. I don't know what Alan number told, what Alan told the police officers. But did you personally hear that in his statements, talking to different people, that he saw five people? Your Honor, yes. Objection, hearsay. That object to that question. And you already moved to strike the witness answered prior to the court. She said she didn't That's not what she said just now. She said yes. The judge said no, I'm not going to strike it. We're a little stalemate. 
prosecution wants it stricken. Court clerk, going to go read the record. She did say yes. On that evening of January 30th, um, you had a chance, you know you talked to some officers, right? You just don't know which ones. Correct. And did you also observe Alan talking to the officers along at the same time period? Correct. And did you ever hear from Alan that there were five people that were running in front of the house? Section calls for your second. This is uh, this rule is invoked specific or is, is there were, specifically to make sure the defendant the has to testify if they want to bring that statement to And him. Alan ran out. You testified earlier that you went back in the living room. Could you tell us about that? Where did you stand in the living room after he ran out the door? Well, I was scared. I was terrified. I didn't know what was going to happen to him. So where did you go? So I hid in front of the TV so I could not see out either of the windows. I told myself it will be bad enough to find him shot. I'm not going to watch him explode. Okay. So you don't have your photos. Would you give it back up? Yeah, this, it's a little funny because this is the defendant's wife, but she was called by the state as a witness. So now she's being questioned for the first time by the defense in cross-examination so they could do leading questions because this is a state's witness. Janet, I, I don't think Gabriel's story of how or Daniel's story about how Gabriel fell on his back could be true at all based on the evidence of the scene that we've heard about and based on the injury and, and everything else. I think he was either mistaken or did not witness it. The defense does have the right to execute or to um, exercise the the ability to deny the prosecution from calling the wife. Say so they say, "Look, we're married. There should be a protection there. Our our marriage it's it should be intimate. It should be personal. You shouldn't be able to pry into know. that." And so, without the defendant's per, uh, permission, should just in her hearing aids. Um, without the defendant's permission, the witness cannot te testify here. He has given permission for her to testify for the state. Permission to publish. This would be uh, states 123H. It's in evidence, Your Honor. <clears throat> right. Wouldn't it be rude if they just showed a picture of Bahamas? Like, oh, sorry, court reporter. Okay, you cannot tell me that's not a drum. Look at the, look at to the right side of the TV stand, that yellow TV stand. That has that zigzag rope pattern. That has got to be a drum. Wanda, can you see this photo? I can. Does this photo help assist where you stood? When Alan went outside? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I was standing directly in front of that console table with the TV that's got a picture of the horse on it. Would that be right here as my finger points to it? Yes, but in the center. Okay. So why there? Because I could not see it. I could not see out either window. And I did not want to see what might happen. And what is going through you right this moment that you're standing in front of these of the TV? Praying, fearful. Now you know there's been a gunshot, according to Ellen, from what you heard. You saw two people with guns. And this is real right now. 
Correct? Correct. And you are scared. I am scared. This was too close to the house. It's too close to the house. And my, Alan's always been my protector. And so I was so afraid for him. You were scared to look out the window. Yes, ma'am, I did not want to look out the window. And even after the shots that you did hear, however many they were, like you said, you weren't counting, right? Correct. Each one probably seemed like a, a possibility of death, correct? Correct. Then there was a pause, and the pause had to be a little bit of time, right? Correct. I was afraid to look. Because when you did look, he was now going down the road where you could see out the window heading to the barn. Yes. So there had to be some time period to elapse to get to that position. Correct. And you were fretting the whole time. I was afraid and praying and after the shooting stopped, I thought I should look out and see what's happened. Okay. And I waited. And then it was the blessing was that you saw. The blessing I saw was he was not lying there on the patio. Okay. And although there's been whatever going on over the time period on this ranch, this was the closest thing that ever happened to you that you fear for his life? Yes. Closest to the house. Closest thing I knew about. But he's your hero. Yes, he is. You felt like a victim. Yes. No one had permission to be there. No one had permission to be there. Nobody had permission to carry a rifle and shoot it on your property. That's correct. So you heard back from him that he was at the barn. Correct. And you believed that or you were informed that, according to your testimony earlier, that he had no idea where these people ran off. That's correct. He's looking at that board as it was laid, that was presented to the jurors. He's off to the raft and down, down ways, right? Correct. Nowhere, nowhere near the body that nowhere, is later found. Nowhere near the body that was later found. Totally different directions. Correct. Police were called, and you weren't part of that, right? No. And they showed up, and you knew they were there. Yes. And at this point in time, after he found the body, you said he came in and told you? Correct. And then police showed up after that? Correct. And anything I'm saying is wrong, please let me know, okay? I'm sorry? Anything I'm saying incorrectly, let me know. Okay. You pretty much stayed in the house while law enforcement went out there and did their work, correct? Correct. I was watching from the window. Okay. Alan was out there for the most part with them. He was. He appeared to be cooperating? Appeared to be. When I seen him from the window, I mean, couldn't hear anything. Right, but he appears to be walking him to the location where the body was found? Correct. You lose sight of them when they're out there? I beg your pardon? It's, you can't see them out there where the body is, correct? Correct. You Did haven't, not. and you didn't see the body then, right? I don't know. No, no. I never not. have. No. But they went in that direction out there east of your house, correct? Correct. Let me talk about um, the living arrangements in the home. First of all, you have a little bit of a shiner. What happened on that? Last 
Friday when you were having the opening testimonies, I was told I would not be called as a witness that day, so I went home. And I was in the bathroom and I fainted and hit my glasses right there on the side of the towel, uh, at the towel rack when I went down. And I came to, I said, looked around, oh, how did I get in this position, like where I was on the floor? Because that wasn't anywhere near where I, I mean, I guess I fell sideways because I hit it and then I went down like that because then I was just looking up on the, at the ceiling when I woke up. And so I had to, I uh, had this huge black eye, put ice on it. And then it didn't seem to be getting any better. So I called my neighbor friend and she took me down to urgent care and then over to the emergency room. Okay. And this is why, while Alan was at court. Correct. So you didn't disrupt what was going on here. No. And he didn't find out about it till after. Correct. He said he was on his way home. He called me and said, I'm on my way home. I said, well, I'm not home. I'm in the emergency room. He said, what? No, I said, I was at the, uh, health, uh, urgent care at that time. And he said, what happened? I said, well, you'll see. And he came over there immediately and he walked in and he was like, what happened to your eye? Okay. I just want to clarify that. Yeah. Okay. That I'm element. healing quickly, I think. Yeah. You look a lot better, don't you? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, Welcome, Catwoman. Glad you're enjoying it. How long were law enforcement out there? before they asked you to come out of your home. Are you referring to the night time? Yes, ma'am. Um, again, I'm not looking at the clock, but I would say I was inside there watching them for about 30 minutes. Okay. What happened when that, when law enforcement came to you? Well, it came up and knocked on the door. It was a man and a woman. And I thought, finally, someone's going to tell me what's going on. And so I opened the door, and they said, get your coat. It's cold outside. Okay. So did you get your coat? Yes, it was hanging on the coat tree right by the door. I picked it up and put it on. I asked, do I need anything else? And the lady said, you might want to take your purse. So I left. I had not stepped out of the front door yet, so I went back to the bedroom to get my purse, and I got back over there, stepped out the door. You want me to finish this? I don't know what, how far you want me to go. Where did you go? I stepped outside the door. Alan hollered, turn on the porch light. So I reached back in the door wall, turned on the porch light. Then he said, the other one too. So I had to go back in the house to go around to the door, to the patio, to turn that light, porch light on. And uh, the young lady accustomed, uh, followed me and took care of me while I was doing that. I don't know what she was doing. She accompanied me. That's the word I was looking for. Um. So where, after you turned the lights on, was an officer accompanying you? When I went to, back in the house, she did. She followed me over. Did you tell her it was okay to follow you? No, she didn't ask. Okay. And then what happens after you turn on the lights for everybody? Then I turned around and went back out the front door, and she followed me out the front door. We closed it, and we're walking down the sidewalk, and I felt, well... Wonder what's going to happen now, and they hopefully they tell me what's going, what what they're doing, actually. But she said she just opened the car door and told me to get in. 
Would that be the back door of the police car? Correct. Is that a door that you're allowed to get out of? I don't know. They lock the door. It's locked. They lock the door. Okay. So you were locked in a car. Correct. Uh, at this time, do you feel like you're under arrest? Were you free to go? I was free. I didn't know what was going on. I understand, but were you free to go? Oh, no. Okay. So you were in custodial care, feeling like you were under arrest. Correct. And you don't even know why? No. Because you didn't do anything? No. They didn't even ask you if you did anything? No. And you were given an option to come out of the car? No. And you were escorted to the police station or the sheriff's department? Correct. As you were sitting in the car, did you see your Alan walking by handcuffed? Yes, I did. Was he also here to be under arrest? Yes, in handcuffs, I would say he was under arrest. Was he placed in a separate car? He was placed in a different car for me, yes. And that's only a half hour-ish. You didn't watch your watch since they came out and Alan had showed him the body. That's correct. How did you feel about what was what you were observing? I felt left out. Like, why aren't they talking to you? Why aren't they explaining what they're doing? What the process is going to be? And then he just walks right by me in handcuffs and they put him in a, another car. And then the young man that was driving the car that I was sitting in, when he came, I said, where's he going? And he said, they've taken him to jail. So. How did that make you feel? Hopeless. Like, I, I, I don't get it. Anyway, just hopeless. Yep. Yeah. So you're a victim. And now you're being victimized even further. Is that Correct. how you feel? Yes, I am. Have you ever been in this position like this before? No. So you're going to the police station and you're supposed to talk to some detectives about what's going on knowing that they, what might be an unfair arrest of you and your husband, and you're supposed to cooperate. Is that how you feel? Yes, that's how I felt. Okay, kind of a mixed emotion, I would guess. Is that true? It is. I mean, I just wanted to go to sit down somewhere and cry, and they kept asking me these questions, and when I was growing up, a policeman asked you questions, you answered it. Because he was there to help you. Even so, the detective asked you questions by giving you false information that your husband confessed. How did that make you feel? Shocked. I. Because he didn't. He even... doesn't shoot at people. Okay. And your knowledge now is there's never been a confession, correct? Correct. So they were trying to trick you. I guess so. How did that make you feel? Well, when I found out later that he had not confessed, then of course I felt. Mistreated would be a good word? Mistreated, lied to, trickery, whatever. It was just, that night was the most horrible thing I've ever been through. Were you ultimately released? Uh, yes, they set me in the um, police station and then eventually they took me home. And about what time do you think that was? Um, approximately. Approximately when they took me home was maybe two o'clock in the morning. So you've been at the police station for hours? Correct. Did 
you uh, try to ask the detective whether or not you had to a- answer the questions he was asking you? Yes, I asked him. And he was asking, like, does Alan have an AK-47? And I'm, I just said, do I have to answer all these questions? I don't understand what my what the rules are. And he said, you got something to hide? I said, no. So then I answered the question, did Alan own an AK-47? Did they ever tell you you were free to go? No. Did they ever give you your rights? I do not remember them reading me my rights, no. I have a right to remain silent, anything you say, and all no. that. You never no. remember hearing They never that. told me that. But yet you couldn't go. No, I felt I could not go. I was in their custody. I couldn't leave. So you went home by yourself. You were taken home by yourself. I was taken home in the police car that I, I think it's the same police car they all look like to me, but the one that I went down there in, then I, they drove me in that one back out to the house. And they told me to sit in the car because they had the search warrant and they showed me and they went inside. So you had to sit in a car for a while when they still were conducting searches of your home? Correct. Did anyone ask you to locate the rifle that Alan had in the home? Yes. Did I you- asked me, where did Alan usually keep his rifle? I told him, most often I remember seeing it on the coat rack by the front door. But would you have been willing to show them the rifle if they had just asked you? I didn't know where the rifle was. Okay, but you could have looked for it, right? I could have looked for it, yes, if they had asked me to help. Okay, and you would have? I would have helped them. Okay. You were trying to cooperate. I was. But then they want, at a later date, the prosecutor, at a whole different date, wants you to give her your passcode, right? Correct. Did she show you a warrant? No. Do you feel you have some privacy rights? Yes. So are you at a point now where you realize that the state has become kind of your enemy? Kind of, yes. Maybe on that date of of the arrest, would you have given them the phone? If they asked for it. But later when the prosecutor asked you months later, whatever date it was, you said no, you weren't going to give it to her, correct? The password, you mean? Yes, ma'am. I didn't because, like I said earlier, I don't think I remember the password on that. That was a brand new phone. I'd had it about a month or two. And then it was gone. And I had to go get another phone. So I don't know what the password was on that phone. You had a different phone now? Yes. So they wanted your old phone? They they kept well, it's my new old phone. Oh. They kept it. They kept it. Um, they kept evidence of your stuff without a anything for a search warrant or anything, right? No search warrant, no receipt. And when they let you go, they didn't let you have all your property back? Like when your they phone? took me home that night, no. Did they explain themselves? No. So you lost your phone and had to get a new phone? Correct. And now you had to come up with another password? Correct. Oh. So you couldn't remember the old one? I don't. Okay. But you do understand that you also have rights and privacy rights, right? Do you understand that as a citizen that you're afforded privacy rights? Privacy rights? I suppose I understand it to a point. I 
that it takes a search warrant to search your home. Yes, unless, he told me that, and he got the search warrant and showed it to me. Right, unless you gave permission. No, I didn't give him permission. But they didn't ask? No, they just said they were getting a search warrant. But had they asked and you said yes, they could have searched. Do you understand that? Yes. I, I really think some of this is irrelevant to the, the trial at hand, but uh, defense might be trying to gain Let's sympathy from the jury. Some Why did they keep her phone if she wasn't, it wasn't charged? If she wasn't charged. Selena, initially I thought she knew her phone password but now that now that she explains this it was months later after she had got a new phone now that it seems more believable now now that I, I understand the the context of that so they took her phone away that night the night of the that they found the body and months later they asked her to go back and say, what's the capacity uh, to your phone? We're going to publish something just for the witness and the court. <clears throat> Could you look at your screen? On the bottom of the paragraph, the bottom paragraph of the upper page. The upper page. Upper page, yes. Okay. And I want you just to review it. This is uh, Deputy Castaneda. Someone's cleaning lint now, off the microphone. Now, reference to the shots. According to this officer, Officer Casanita, uh, Deputy Casanita, you, it's, is it true that he reports that you said um, that you heard shots outside? You see that part in the last sentence of that top paragraph? The upper page, oh, upper page, page, which would be two, if you look below, it's three or four, so page two. Last paragraph, almost towards the last line. Yes. Okay. I see it. All right. And that would be a true statement, though, right? Correct. You did hear shots. I did hear shots. Now, just bring some clarity to that for a second before I move forward. You have no idea at the moment of the shots who's shooting, correct? Correct. A lot of testimony came earlier, but there's a lot of I already know or presumptions. But at this moment of these shots, you are hiding between in front of that TV, right? Correct. So you don't know if someone else is shooting at your husband or he's shooting or both, right? I do not know. Okay. Kind of hard to testify to who did what and whether your husband shot if you don't know, correct? Correct. But you know now. I know now what. Who shot? Yes. Okay. I mean, you learned that he was shooting in the air. Correct. Towards the first group. Objection, you're going to cause for hearsay. Towards the first group of men that ran by the house. Correct. Okay. Now, I'm going to reference now another report I want you to review. And this would be uh, Sergeant Garcia, Deputy Garcia. I want you to look at the upper page and I want you to go to, there's three paragraphs from the bottom. So the second paragraph from the top, starting there towards the bottom goal. So read that big, the bulkier paragraph to yourself. 
now the defense is pulling the same trick back that the state did, pulling information out of out of these reports that she was presented with. I think we got a, a new cameraman at lunch. I think they switched. That or the other one got his hand slapped. Okay. Okay, so in referencing the third paragraph above, you've had a chance to review it? Yes. Okay. And is it true that a I'm, court... I'm, I'm gonna oh. object in advance because I believe I know where we're going with this and the court's already ruled on it, having read the... Motion in limine? Oh, headphones, headphones people. I'm gonna object in advance. I'm already offended. Uh, <laughs> I, I wish we could hear this. Ooh. Did you see that? She's looking at the jury and smiled. Like a, made a connection and smiled. Maybe she says, I cannot recall. This cameraman is extremely focused. Or, or very lazy. Very little variety. We've had we've had like three camera movements all day, all all afternoon. Someone on the jury must have rolled their eyes. She's been smiling at them loads. I've been missing it, Lizzie. Is there a stand your ground law in Arizona? Um, not not a per se stand your ground, but they don't have any right. They don't have any requirement to retreat. Uh, so so in effect, yes, it's stand your ground. St Arizona would be considered a stand your ground state. What that means is if you are confronted, if, if you are somewhere where you have the right to be, okay, you're on your property, you're, you know, walking around in your yard, something and somebody comes and confronts you or there's a threat, uh, you do not have to retreat. You don't have to back away to safety. You don't have to be like, well, I'll, give, I'll call the police and see, you know, I'll go hide and hope they go away. No, you can definitely stand and defend at that point. Now, it's not legal to shoot someone for trespassing yet. I say yet because Arizona literally is considering a law right now in their legislature to make it legal to shoot someone for trespassing. You can go ahead. Thank you. Oh, okay. Overruled. So you had a chance to um, read this paragraph so I can ask you a question about it. Uh, isn't it true that in this documentation that this officer believes that you said you never heard gunshots? Did you read that part? I did read that part. Is that a true statement? No. So we got one officer saying you did say it, one officer saying you did say it. Which one was it? I did not say I didn't hear shots. So you did hear it. So at least one officer is wrong on what you've said, correct? Correct. Unless they're talking about the first shot. Now I'm asking just what you're reading. Don't okay. read into it any further. Okay. From what, from what I read, it said, did I hear any shots? And I said, no. But that was wrong. I heard shots okay. while I was standing there hidden, frozen by the TV. And the other officer was correct, but this one documented incorrectly. Correct. if we're going to find all the other mistakes. There was reports. some talk about whether Alan came in immediately and checked on you. I mean, he was out there where the issues were going on, right? Correct. He was out there. And if he felt immediate threat, recall for him to check on you, do you believe he would have been there? Yes. Yes, he would have been in there if he thought I, I needed to be checked on.
Let's talk about your dogs a little bit. At that time, you had two um, black labs, correct? Correct. And tell me about their nature. I mean, labs are hunting dogs, right? Yes. You've raised labs quite a bit, right? We have. Okay. And those two dogs, is it fair to say, is very inquisitive. Meaning, when you take a walk, are they smelling around, checking the environment as you walk with them? Yes, they did not stay with me. They would circle back and make sure I was coming their way. But they were always out searching, smelling. Okay. And so it doesn't surprise you that they later in the evening discovered this body. No, it does not surprise me. It's part of their skill set, correct? Correct. Dogs find things. All right, I think um, it's we're time. Just, we're going to adjourn for the evening. Uh, long day. So, um, like I told you, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to adjourn today at four o'clock. We uh, will recommence tomorrow morning. At 8.30, with this witness. Any questions? All right, we're adjourned for the evening. We'll see you all tomorrow morning. The, the judge did not want to hear anything about the dogs. <laughs> so as soon as we asked a dog question, he's like, look, we're done. We're done for the day. We're seven minutes early, but we're calling it quits right now. What's happening, the jury doesn't know this. The jury doesn't know this yet. But what's happening is all the lawyers from both sides are getting together, and they're having a party tonight. Uh, they're going to the property. They're going to hang out at the ranch. They're going to they're gonna drive around, take a look, maybe take the ATV out, uh, check out the Arroyo or Arroya, depending on how, who you are. Um, maybe drive down, you know, take a glance at the border wall, take a few pictures, um, walk a few distances, take some measurements. That's, they're, they're all doing this in preparation for the actual jury view because they, they're going to fight over what the jury gets to see when they go out there. Selena, how was my cat? My cat... Got in a fight and, and hurt its paw, but it's it's getting better. Like it's uh, it's not it's not limping anymore. It's not acting funny at all. So, it originally it was like it was it would get up and it would like limp and then it would be like running. Now it'll grab things and it'll chase lizards and everything. So I think it's getting better. But cat's good. Um, we're done for the night. We're done. Have some nachos. Have <laughs> some nachos. They're gonna make some uh, some sandwiches. There's a special sandwich they're making for everybody. If we uh, take a gander, that's uh, that's the defendant. That's the closing frame. Uh, now go get to work. Nosy Rosie. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little vacuuming. Just clean up. We've. I told you we had 81 gallons of insulation. We vacuumed out for that came down from the ceiling. Um, and that's paper, shredded paper insulation. It's, it's awful. I, I've got about a gallon of it in my lungs, and about the other 80 gallons were in the garbage we sucked up with the shop vac. I tried to vacuum it so it didn't, like, fall down on me, but some of it did. So, did Kiki get hurt? He gets in fights. There's, there's this other cat. It's a mean, mean cat. It's a black cat with white, um, white patches. And it, they, they full on tear into each other you know how the cats they like tear into each other and they like use their their hind feet to like claw at each other and things like that well i think this cat i think my cat got bit on the leg because it's like its front paw like right right there there was a cut and a, a little drop of blood and everything and, and now it's i mean now it'll let me touch it and it, it'll it'll like pull away gently it's not like gonna claw at me or anything but anyway that's all I think, I think that's it. Is there anything else we need to talk about tonight? Portal to Melanie Little. Brandy's on with her. Hey, that, that would be awesome. I would, I would love to portal over there. Let me, uh, let me see. Why is it not letting me? Oh, there we go. Redirect. Where is it? Oh, there she is. Melanie. Live with Brandy. Okay, we're going. We're gonna we're gonna end it right here because I I don't want you guys to miss. I don't know how much of it already gone on. Um, Melanie Little and Brand Brandy are on together. I want to listen as well. So Ashley, thanks for the tip. Thank you for the tip. Uh, we have some of the most amazing content creators on YouTube, and uh, and and they're not me. 
<laughs> so I love to I love to uh, to jump around and learn from all of them. So tonight when you go home, please hug the people you love, smile at someone, make their day just a little bit better, and please stay safe to go live again tomorrow morning. I think tomorrow morning we're going to listen to that little bit of the testimony we heard. It'll be the Zoom video. It's going to look a little weird, but we're going to get the audio we missed from the cameraman sort of having a snooze fest. I'll dig that up. So it's going to be good. All right. Uh, we're going to end the music quickly. So uh, n- no ceremony. We're all going to portal right now. And when you land, please click the like button. Please <laughs> click the like button. That'd be great. No a little bit doing great content. She does. All right. Uh, have a good day. Uh, birthday song tomorrow yes you have to be there early if you miss it that's not on me that's not on me if you want laura added make sure you're there early we'll, we'll do that all right you guys we'll see you tomorrow have a good one see you over there on the on mel and little's channel see you in a bit i was kick back taking it easy here goes our portal somebody just sent me a video of roaches fighting I don't know who won.